Greetings to those who watch below. As you know, on this channel we love a good paranormal experience, so turn out the lights, light the candles, and let's get creepy. An Unpleasant Haunting by FilmBuff1234 I like to think that I'm quite open to the supernatural. I have experienced more spirits than most people my age, and have always been open to the unknown. I attribute it to my home. I moved in there at the age of roughly six. I encountered things that might seem tame compared to other stories, but for me, it was terrifying. It started with nightmares, dreams that a presence was out to get me. My family assumed it was just another monster under my bed fear that every kid has. It wasn't. I'm not saying it's anything like Enfield or Amityville, but it was creepy. I started hearing whispers in my room, angry whispers. I knew I wasn't dreaming. I know if something is a dream or not. The whispers said stuff like, be quiet, or shut up and listen. It wasn't my parents. My mum never tells me to shut up now, let alone when I was six. The seemingly tame haunting took a physical turn. One of the guests at our house heard screaming from the bathroom one night. Things went missing and reappeared. Bottles of squash showed up in the middle of the kitchen floor. Doors started to be opened or flung shut. Typical cliche horror movie stuff. And one time, a Lego figure was lobbed at my eye from across the room. My stepdad, who was a skeptic before he moved in, was freaking out and my mum was shaking. I was crying so much. Phones started to be knocked off shelves at three every morning. My scariest experience was when I was in the shower one time, and two hands came through the curtain and shoved me. I pulled the curtain away, and no one was there. Things died down considerably after that. I sometimes saw shadows moving out of the corner of my eye, and we've all heard noises at early hours of the morning. A few times I've seen an apparition staring at me through a window coming home from school. Other minor stuff has happened, and we sometimes joke that the ghost likes us now. My mum has since told me that she believed the spirit conjures up negative energy because she and my stepdad used to frequently argue when we first moved in, and the woman who lived there before us stabbed her husband. The Bad Man in the Basement by Stoker when I was younger, I had a wonderful imagination. I could take circles and turn them into balloons. I could take a string of yarn and turn it into a rabbit. But my imagination would not be the cause for this experience that I am about to share with you. Before I was born, my great-grandparents passed away, along with numerous other relatives. And when I was younger, I had no idea who these people had been in life. I can only give you a time period of 1998 to 1999, so I was maybe around two or three. We lived in a house that was a bit out of the way of everything else, but still close enough to town to be considered a part of Copenhagen. I wasn't afraid of much during this time period, and the only thing that sent me running was the bad man. He appeared to me as a gruff fisherman type. He wore a yellow rain slicker and a pair of black rubber boots. He had tan, leathery skin, and had a plethora of scars on his hands and back. His hair was thick and black, and he had quite an extraordinary beard. He wore a hat that matched his rain slicker, and always had a cigar that he would smoke. Whenever I smelt the smoke, I would instantly begin to cry out or chant frantically, Bad man! Bad man! All while trembling, staring at a space in the basement where he inhabited, and pointing. My mother was perplexed by all of this, and one day, while my mother was talking with her cousin in one of the rooms of the bisected basement, I came bursting out of the other room, screaming my little chant of, Bad man! My mother and cousin looked at each other, my mother scooped me up, and they ran up the stairs. At some point, I remembered what scared me about the bad man, and I told my mother that he had laughed at me and attempted to put the cigar out on my flesh. He didn't get the chance but I knew that he would have done if he could. Another point in time, my mum had a boyfriend three years after my father had been killed by a police officer 
who was under the impression that he had a weapon on him. Her boyfriend, who is now my stepfather, said that watching me peek back and forth to look at something, only to scream and take off running was particularly unsettling. At one point, we moved from the house when I was five, and I haven't seen the bad man since. To this day, it's still unclear to me, and whether or not he was a deceased relative, a spirit, or a demonic entity. Bad Ouija Experience by New Hunter 30 Myself, my friend and his girlfriend all shared a condo together. I moved in after they did, and they were always telling me of the things that were going on in it. I moved in, there was nothing going on for about the first two months or so, and slowly things started picking up. We would hear growls from down in the basement, and none of us ever felt comfortable down there, so we always went in pairs. We would see figures walking around, objects would be moved, doors closing by themselves, just to give you all an idea. My friend's girlfriend, Becky, suggested one night after almost a year of this that we should use a Ouija board to try and contact whatever there was and get rid of it. Against my best judgement, I agreed. We were all up in their room watching some movies at the time, as they had the best setup for films, and we went down to the kitchen table and got everything prepared. Jessie, a friend of Becky's, showed up as we were about to start. I invited her to join us and she declined but said she wanted to watch. We started a recorder to go back and listen to later. We asked some basic questions, and moved on to the more in-depth ones. My friend, who we will call John, asked some questions and started to cry. We asked what was wrong. He said nothing, but this is my grandma. The questions he asked only he knew the answers to, but as he got more in-depth on questions to make sure it was her, the answers became wrong more frequently. When he noticed they were wrong, what we think was another spirit came through. It was of a young girl who had been murdered three doors down from us. We asked several questions. The first was, do you know what or who was in our house? She replied, yes. Is it evil? We asked again. Yes. Becky asked, is it a strong entity? The response we got was yes. D E M O N. And at this, we all got nervous. John asked, How strong is it? The response was V E R Y. Becky then asked, What is its name? The response was Z O Y. What should we do? She asked, and the response to that was G E T O U T. And Becky, being the one who felt everything was okay, said, I mean, how do we defeat it? Again, we got G-E-T-O-U-T. -E Only this time it kept cycling through the letters getting faster and faster. John said, fuck this, we're done. Close whatever door you opened. And John asked Jesse to get out his car keys out of his room. Jesse came down and said, I can't, your door is locked. We ran up the stairs after Becky closed the session, and the door was indeed shut and locked, although we left it wide open. We went and the keys were not on the dresser where he left them. We looked around for about ten minutes and found them under the bed. We went to Becky's family's house and listened to the recorder. There was nothing on the recorder at first, but as soon as we started asking about the demon, you could hear a growling slowly getting louder until it sounded like it was right by us. The point where the planchette spelled Zoi, we heard an almost half laugh, half growl, and heard, You are mine. We moved out within a month, and only went back one time to get our stuff. When we went back, I felt as though someone was behind me, but when I looked there was nothing. I got out to the car to leave, and noticed my metal crucifix, that was in perfect condition upon entering, was now bent in the middle at a 45 degree angle. My Nights with Mr. Bad by Mytham I was around eight years old. My brother and I shared one room with a bunk bed. It was a nice little setup, since my brother didn't like to sleep alone. 
At first, I could sleep peacefully. I rarely thought about any bumps in the night or things falling. That ended when I started actually researching the paranormal. I had a sudden interest in all things ghostly. I checked out informational books about them at my school library, along with people's true experiences. I still felt no fear in any of the rooms of my house. No presences. Most kids would have nightmares after reading those books, but I was fine. I wasn't scared to sleep with my covers off, as it's pretty darn hot here in Utah during the summer, or to walk around my house at night. Then, it started. I was suddenly terrified to set foot in the bunk bedroom, and I didn't know why. I dreaded going to sleep every night, and my parents assumed it was insomnia. It wasn't. You see, I could have fallen asleep if I wanted to, but instead, I forced myself to stay awake. It was that terror, that fear that I was going to die if I slept. Every night, it took me hours to work up the courage to stand and dash across the hall to my parents' room, and sometimes I was just too scared to move. I'd spend those nights huddled under the covers, crying and sweating. My mum and dad let me in the first couple of months and let me sleep in between them. Strangely, I felt safe in their room. I had no problem falling asleep. So then, it was the bunk bedroom, right? I guess so. By then, I was feeling like I wasn't alone. I wasn't, of course. My brother was there. But you know what I mean. Like there was someone next to me, watching me, waiting to kill me. It escalated further, when my parents started locking their door. It was horrible. I'd pound on their door and cry for them to open up. Luckily, my dad's a bit of a softie, and he'd always let me in. This whole thing lasted nearly two years. My grandpa died while it was still going on. Of course, he would never make me feel so scared. Then, as suddenly as it came, it stopped. I was suddenly able to sleep in the room at night. I would get up and walk down the stairs to get water without fear. I could use the restroom in peace. What a relief this was for me. By that time, I knew ghosts and demons weren't real. I knew my Mr. Bad was real, even if I don't exactly know what he is. I also knew he was gone. Sadly, not for long, as he made a grand re-entrance recently. That's a separate story, though. I talked to my brother about my experience recently, and he said he felt nothing. That was strange to me. It was such a powerful terror that came and left suddenly. Surely it wasn't my imagination, right? I didn't end up telling my dad about these experiences for nearly four years. He felt bad for locking the door, and confided that he, too, sometimes had to endure a night with our Mr. Bad. I never told my mum, and I still haven't. She'd think I'm crazy. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, as always, leave a like down below. Um, Feel free to comment. Always, always feel free to comment. I'm going to be hanging around after this video is posted to answer your comments straight away. Um, I'll continue to do that for the next day or so. Um, Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, that way you'll be the first person to know when a new video is up. So, until next time, sleep tight.